tonight I'm doing a test. Well, I've already kind of done tests and I'll get into that in a minute. Tonight I'm doing an illustration um, using water-based markers on Yupo. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with Yupo, Yupo is a synthetic paper. It's plastic. Um, it's non-porous. You can use alcohol markers on it. You can use water-based markers. In fact, I've got a little cheat sheet right here that I put together while I was playing around on it. Sorry, my light wants to reflect off of the ink and that's something you're gonna notice as you play with Yupo yourself. So this is alcohol ink layered on top of alcohol ink. I was trying to get it to blend. Uh, alcohol ink does not want to easily blend on Yupo. It would rather displace the prior layer. Water-based markers tend to naturally blend on Yupo. Um, they can be used together. You can do alcohol first and do a layer of water-based, but if you do, um, if you scrub too hard, it will lift up the alcohol and displace it, and it might ruin your water-based marker, so you wanna clean the nib after you do that. With water-based markers, colorless blenders and Tombow ABTs can be used to displace pigments or to move pigments. Um, and uh, you can work from water base into alcohol, although the alcohol will displace the water base on your Yupo. Um, with alcohol inks, the colorless blender works to, to move the ink around, but a Tombow ABT colorless blender will not move your alcohol ink. Um, you can use color pencil on Yupo. Um, this is Irojodin color pencil. These came in my sketch box. Um, they are a medium hardness pencil, but they seem to like Yupo just fine. Um, colorless Blender will move your pigments cleanly. Uh, Tombow ABT will kind of blend them out. Um, you can use your color pencil on top of your alcohol marker, but if you do it on color based marker, it will scrub the dye away, leaving like a white kind of a resist. So that's, that's basically a primer on uh, water base and alcohol markers on Yupo. So I'm gonna get started and kind of hope that everything works out. But if it doesn't, I can always use some rubbing alcohol to wipe it all away and start clean. So I've already got my color swatched and I've got my paper um, taped. So I've got my Yupo taped on top of the paper um, where the inks are. And I've done this sort of technique with you guys several times, so hopefully you're familiar with it by now. I'm going to composite the two digitally in Photoshop later. Now, if you're noticing a bit of a resist on your Yupo where the ink doesn't want to go down, that's because the oils in your hand have basically created a barrier between the paper and your inks. And you can, um, before you start, you can wipe your paper down, your Yupo down with some rubbing alcohol. This is 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. I use it in my studio all the time. It'll quickly evaporate and it's going to get rid of any sort of grease that your hand might have left on your Yupo. Now, you can't just wipe it down like this several times while you're inking because it's going to it's going to remove your your uh, inks. It's going to remove what you're putting on here. Now, you might uh, I should point out that I've tried several types of inking utensil on Yupo and I found none that actually work. Um, all of them are reactivated when I add uh, color on top of it. So that's another reason why I am working the way I'm working. And even though I did those like preliminary tests on that uh, scrap of Yupo, this is still um, really an exploratory thing for me. I'm not 100% sure how this is gonna work out. So I'm applying her skin tone first, which is what I tend to do on these tests. Um, and that is because for me, skin tones are one of the most important things. And if I can't render them properly, uh, then I'm much less interested in the markers. And I'm using the uh, Tombow ABT to distribute the ink. And what it really does is instead of distributing it and blending it, it pretty much just removes it. So you wanna be careful with that. So it could probably be used to remove um, 
buildup of ink that you don't want. And this is probably like my fourth or fifth time using Yipo. Um, I'm very, I'm always intrigued by it. I would love to be more proficient with it, but I just eh, am not. It's hard for me to produce results that I like on Yipo. So I haven't put the time in to learning how to use it properly, but I think this might be a good um, sort of method for me. And I like, now that I have a feel for how the colors are going to blend using the colorless blender, I like what I'm able to achieve on her face. And I'm pretty much just coloring in the shadows right now and leaving um, the highlights white and like sort of blending into them to soften the transition between shadow and highlight. And with this translucent paper, you can see through it pretty, pretty easily, especially since um, water-based markers are a fairly translucent media. Now, if you start to have trouble, you can pull out your light table and um, use that to help you out. But I don't like using my light table because it makes it difficult for me to kind of gauge what the colors look like accurately. So if I can get away with not using my light table, I will. And this is translucent Yupo, which I actually think is gorgeous. And I like it better than the regular white Yupo, which is what I've used in the past. And I specifically bought translucent Yupo so that I could put it on top of my line art and work like that. Now with Yupo, you're not really going to be able to build up a lot of layers of color. So you really do need to work with the white of your paper. Um, and for somebody like me, I like, feel, I kind of color like in a coloring book where I fill everything in and then I go back and I add white highlights. Um, and that is not a technique that's going to benefit you using Yupo because you just can't get that many layers. All right. So I have my base layer of skin done and it looks like her face is fairly dry and I'm cleaning off my Tombow ABT on a clean paper towel because I don't want that color to affect everything else I do. Now, one of the problems with the Tombow ABT, with the, I'm sorry, um, with the water-based markers on Yupo is that if I want to add pink to her skin, it's going to displace that layer I just put down. So you really have to decide See, I'm doing it on her knee. I'll zoom in so you can see. It's not going to layer, it's gonna remove it. So you need to work from light to dark. Let's see if we can get, the slightly darker pink looks too dark. It might. I'll put it on her lips, but I'm, I think I'm not going to put it on her cheeks this time because it will be very hard for me to blend that out properly. Now on the knees, I can just allow this to dry and then go back over it. And you're not, like I said, you're not going to get, in fact, I might need to let it dry for a really long time if I want a significant difference in color. So I guess I'm going to have to um, let this layer sit and come back. But see, the pink even starts to displace other colors. And I'm just trying to soften it up a little bit with the Tombow ABT. Now, I haven't tested other water-based markers on this paper yet. But um, from my other marker tests, I can say that other brands of marker, other brands of water-based markers will probably work about as well. The exception might be Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. But I could be wrong about that. And if you haven't tried water-based markers on vellum yet, I recommend you remedy that because water-based markers and vellum are best friends. They're made, they're made to go together pretty much. If you are having trouble finding a paper that works well with water-based markers, um, vellum is the paper for you. You also want to be careful on this sort of paper because 
your hand will smear the ink. So you're going to need to work carefully and precisely. And your markers are going to squeak. And if you work wet over wet, um, your colors are going to bleed into each other. Now that might be something you want, or it's going to be something you're going to hate and it's going to look terrible. So um, if there is a technique you want to try, you should test it on a scrap piece of Yupo beforehand. Now, the Zig Art and Graphic Twins are very juicy and wet, and that's something I've noted in all the other video, other marker tests I've done. Um, and it's particularly true on Yupo, they can't soak into the paper, so they're going to take a while to evaporate. So if you're playing around rendering on Yupo, you need to give yourself plenty of time. And Yupo will also show the, the direction in which you make strokes. So you can use that to your advantage. Or you can use it and it'll make a muddy mess. So if you've been meaning to improve your directionality in terms of how you apply color, well, Yupo is a great place to practice because it's going to hold you to it. Now, those inks I put down are still looking really wet, so I'm going to try to work carefully around them because if I want to do shadow, um, like I'll use the darker side of the Zig brushable to do some shadow, if I run it into her hair, it's going to pick up those colors, and that's going to be a problem. So really, you can get two, maybe three layers of color on this paper before it starts to just turn into a mess. If you can, you want to have a light hand because um, you don't want to scrub the layer you've already applied away, you just want to add another layer on top of it. Okay, so I need to allow that to dry before I can progress. And I think I'm going to leave the skin other than maybe adding some shadows where her hip will. See, I'll do it and then I'll regret it. shadow where her hair overlaps her face a little bit. I really don't want to mess with the face more than that because it's going to end up muddy and over rendered on this type of paper. Now usually I would do a lot of layers. I like a lot of layers on the face. I like a lot of pink in the cheeks. I think that's really cute but on this on Yupo you don't want to do that because it's going to turn muddy. And Yupo will never buckle on you, so you don't need to stretch it. And it won't tear, but you do need, if you want to trim it or cut it, you do need to use um, like a paper cutter or scissors. You can't do it by hand. So if you're hoping to achieve a nice natural looking deckled edge with um, Yupo, that's not going to happen. You're going to have to fake that. Now see what I mean about um, like the direction of your line being important? It's really evident on larger areas like her shirt because the ink will pool. And part of this is I'm working kind of slow and I really don't need to be afraid of, um, of some areas drying before I can apply ink to them because it dries so slow on your bow and another layer will just reactivate it. Hopefully it'll dry a little more consistent, but if not, that's okay too. Cause like, that's what these tests are for. And I'm sharing them with you guys in hopes that it helps you when you make art, helps you when you're at the store looking at things to buy. 
Now, if you wanted to blend this so that it would be um, a lighter sort of color or have lighter areas to it, you could use the Tombow ABG to pick up a lot of this ink. I mean, you'd have to clean it off regular, regularly on a paper towel, but... You could do it like that. And I might end up picking out some highlights using that marker. Probably after the ink has had time to dry. And those of you who have painted on Yupo, this is this should be old hat to you, especially if you've done watercolor, because water-based markers on Yupo handle very similarly. They're probably a little easier to control. And there's all sorts of fun things you can do on Yupo. Um, I'm <laughs> kind of demonstrating a very mundane. Um, technique, a very controlled technique, but you can do all sorts of neat things like dropping alcohol inks on top of it for interesting effects and then spraying it both with water and with rubbing alcohol. So it might look, it looks worse than it actually is. That's the still wet area this up here is more dry. So it's gonna take a while because it's really just, you know, pooled on top. It has to evaporate and those areas will probably dry a little bit darker. But like I said, we can use the Tombow to pick some of that up. Um, I guess now would be a fine time for me to go take like a coffee break because it's gonna take a little while to dry. But instead I'm gonna move on to her boots. I'm trying to leave significant gaps between the wet areas and the areas I'm working on so that nothing that I don't want to bleed together will bleed together. And you guys, there's like all this background to it as well. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm just gonna focus on rendering the figure and then I'll either do a time lapse of the background after the figure has had plenty of time to dry or I'll just leave the background un rendered for this. Honestly, I'm finding the Zig Art and Graphic Twins to be a little wet for my liking on the Yupo. Um, the brushables, which are drier and are supposedly they're waterproof when dry. I don't know if they're waterproof on Yupo. I don't know if anything's waterproof on Yupo. Um, they're a little drier in how they handle. So they're easier to control than the art and graphic twin. And see, I've lost the detail for the, in the boots. Um, I can't see that anymore, but I bet if I pulled out my light table, I'd be able to see it. Now her hair looks like it is dry and it's not tacky. You don't really want to touch where you've um, put on because one, you're putting down oils and you don't want to put oils down on your on your illustration, um, especially on Yupo because it's going to cause a resist. Two, if it is tacky, it means your inks are still wet. So you might be causing a big mess. And even if it is dry, you might, oh shoot. You have to be really careful with like eraser dust and shavings because some just blew into my thing and I want to remove it. but I don't want it to smear and it's gonna smear. All right, well, that's fine. We'll zoom in and we'll get rid of it, maybe. Get rid of it, fingers crossed, with a little bit of, yeah, there we go. That went, usually when I experiment for you guys, it, it goes haywire really quick. I think that happens because I must secretly enjoy juggling balls of fire. Those of you who keep pet birds at home, the squeaking of the Zig Art and Graphic Twin sort of sounds like um, the sort of nest speak that like parakeets and lovebirds do when they're happy. It's 
So maybe that's the squeak of happy markers. I'm trying to see, and I'm trying to not get on top of things. Oh man, I think this might be when I finally conquer Yupo. Aww. And the skin is even dried enough that if I want to, I can add another layer of shadow. So I'm trying to do that very delicately because I don't know which areas it'll work in and which areas it will not. Yeah, see, it doesn't want to work on this hand over here, which will be the hand it could really... I could really benefit from it working on. And her shirt still looks like it's drawing. That's gonna take a while to dry though. So, we still have her pants, her socks, and her scarf. And I think I want those to be the same color. And I think I want them to be this color green. And then I might have to turn the video off for a while because this needs time to dry. I will say though these paper tests have been a lot of fun for me. Part of that is because I'm an art supply nerd and I get really excited when when unexpected, unexpected combinations work well together. I get really, <laughs> really geekily pumped up. So on her scarf, why don't we use the Tombow ABT to kind of blend some of that color Gotta be really careful around my face. Why don't we use that to blend some of the color into something lighter? So I've got plenty of time because that's not going anywhere. The the wet it's gonna be wet for a while. So I'm gonna clean my combo first, and then I'm gonna start and see what it really does. Is it really just picks up? areas of color and apparently makes certain areas look pink. That's going to take a long time to get that green out of that brush. I could really benefit from having a yellow. Since I've started using these regularly, that's something I should invest in, is some yellows. So, now we're kind of at a forced stopping point because I have to let things dry before I can work them too much more. So, I'm going to have to step away for a little while and come back when this is a little bit more dry. So, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so I've got this kind of a skin of green right here on her shorts. And I'm going to try, you know what, I'm probably going to regret this. But, you know, I'm going to try to pick it up and then apply again. Just for a more even tone, which I wasn't getting. I mean, even that, which isn't great, is kind of an improvement on the black, the dark spot, which looked fine, but it's on her shorts, and it kind of makes her look like she wet her pants. So, you know, I didn't think it was a good look. So I'm adding kind of a novelty texture to her scarf. And... I'm going to add some shadow, if I can, to her shirt. And it looks like the answer to that might be no. Yeah, the answer to that is you both says no. That's a no. Now, it could be that it's just not dry enough. It could be that the... Um, Art and Graphic Twins are just too wet for that sort of a thing. Like, I might be able to come back in a couple days and do it. 
Um, and I guess that is worth considering. And go ahead though and do the design on her shirt. And you know, when I was a younger artist, back when I was doing the Yupo watercolor test, um, I would push it. I would be like, no, I'm going to decide <laughs> where those shadows are going to go. And they're going to go right here. And um, it ended up looking terrible. And I was really disappointed with it. And I was really frustrated. And now I'm at the point where, you know what? If the Yupo doesn't want that to happen, um, I might try again in a couple of hours. But it's not a big deal. And it seems like the wetter colors are a little less willing to be layered or they take a little longer to be able to be dry take a little longer to be dry enough where I could layer on them because I'm managing on the boot and I managed on the scarf My shorts are kind of looking like they might let me in some parts. Not neatly, though. They're gonna fight with me. And you know, that's okay. Because that's part of falling in love with the media. Is accepting it for what it is. And not trying to push it into being something else. Now, I am kind of worried that um, I'm not going to be able to scan. And I really won't. Uh, I'm not going to be able to scan this layer because Yupo has a tendency to get kind of tacky when you've applied um, inks to it. So, see, all right. So that shoulder is dry enough that I can, I can layer it. So it's really a matter of time. Probably like go take a bath, go to bed, wake up, finish this video, amount of time. Now if I was doing a darker, if I had a darker color, like a darker blue gray, that would go on top of it without much of a problem. It would uh, lead to some very smooth blending, but I don't have that darker gray. So I'll just have to fight my baser instincts, which is to pick, 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 and let it be if I want it to layer at all. So I'm going to have to go find something else to do, because if I sit here, I'm going to want to pick at it, and I'm going to want to try and force it to be something it can't. But if I step away and I come back, then I can layer on that blue, which is what I really want. <laughs> I really want it. Uh, so, you know, I guess I'm going to have to step away for a bit and come back in a little while. I cheated. I got started on it again and I forgot to turn on the video. That's okay. All I really did was uh, fill in the arms a little bit since it's a little drier. It can take it, kind of. Maybe I just got impatient. I don't know. Some areas are definitely drier than others and are more accepting of a new layer. I think I'll probably have to call that good enough. Actually, might call all of that good enough and just focus on doing the background. Because I think any more layers, any more layering I do on this is going to end up... Um, smudged all over the place. I think I'll just end up running into the same problems over and over again. And there's probably a, sm a smart way to handle the background. I'm trying to think about what it might be. I think for the crazy quilt embroidery that I've got going on in the back, I am just going to do one layer of color each instead of worrying about shadow. 
since there's so much of it. And I'll just try to work my way down as carefully as I can, even if it takes a little while. I say that, I'm a very impatient person, so I'll probably try to get as much knocked out as I can as quickly as possible. Uh, I forgot which one's the overlap. Well, it's on the paper. Okay. And you can just plow on through with the Yupo. If you made a mistake, you can just tear that new color through it. And it'll move. But in general, working on the U-boat is a lot of fun. And, um... If, if and when I get more brushables, because they're the dryer of the... of the water-based markers, and dryer seems to work a little bit better. It dries quicker, for example, so you can move faster on it. Um... If I get more brushables, then I will probably use brushables and Yupo a little more often because it's fun and the translucent Yupo has a very satisfying feeling. It just feels nice. I was telling my art supply enabler that I'd love to see how mini comics printed on it. Not the whole mini comic, but like the cover, that would look so nice, I think. Or even like, wow, I won't give all my ideas away. I need to write that one down before I forget. That might end up being a surprise treat for Patreon backers. So I don't want to spoil it. Aw, oh, some of these have gotten knocked out of alignment. That's gonna be not fun to correct digitally. Now, I am not saying you can't use alcohol-based markers. You totally can. And I showed you guys what that looked like. Um, I just don't necessarily think I'm going to do an alcohol marker test on Yupo. I might change my mind. I've, I've tried it in the past and I didn't like how it turned out. Um, of course, I have changed my bag of tricks a little bit. I've got some new tricks in there. So maybe I will try it. But it definitely requires me to rethink how I handle things. I can't just rely on my comfort zone of rendering techniques. But you know, in the case of the water-based markers, that's great. Because I think... The more I play with them on other papers, the more I'm sad that they're so overlooked by other artists. Or, um, at least in the, like, uh, comic art, web comic art, uh, anime convention, like, that kind of art community, um, they're really overlooked in favor of alcohol markers, especially Copics. And I think in the scrap and crafting communities, they probably, water-based markers are probably overlooked there as well. I try to scope out Michaels whenever I go buy crickets for my leopard gecko, which is every, every week, every two weeks. Um, um, See where her eyebrows kind of smudged because I got greedy and I tried to put them in before they were ready. Okay, all right. <laughs> Thanks for looking. 
is cute, but it's not her. It's not Kara. So I'm gonna try and very carefully fix that. And I think it'll work. If I'm very careful because. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I should just be grateful for what I have. I think I got it. Gotta stop resting my hand though where I've already applied ink. All right, I think that's okay. Oh, it like totally seeped into her face line. Ah, that's what you get. That's what I get for being so impatient. I told you guys it would happen and look, it happened over here too. Hmm, that's frustrating. Well, it looked like it happened on her leg as well. Fortunately, you can kind of, if you're very careful and patient, you can kind of fix it with your skin tone. You guys can't even see what I'm talking about. And that's okay. I'm okay with y'all not seeing it. But when you try it for yourselves, you probably will see it. And you'll be like, what? And just know that you can go back with the, the first color you'd put down, the original color, the color it's supposed to be. You can go back and very lightly reapply that color and it's going to pick up that prior color. And hopefully that prior color won't seep in and make me scream. Oh, I have a, always have hairs everywhere. And you have to clean your alcohol marker, very, I mean your water base marker frequently when you're picking this up. She could make the problem worse. I'm sorry if my head keeps popping into frame. Oh, please, please don't further push. Don't push back in because I got it fixed and be sad and here I was talking about how much I like water base markers how could you do this to me I think it'll be okay other than my head being like super in the frame that's not okay I can see where the green bled up into the blue, too. The real issue, the real issue is the markers that are very watery, very uh, inky. The um, Art and Graphic Twins, they put down too much. Um, and it, like, pushes into the areas that don't... Oh, I forgot what the term is. Is it hydroscopic where it will pull water into it that's what's going on is that the areas of that are not super wet but they're a little bit wet they're a little bit damp will pull water from areas that are more da damp to kind of equalize it and um that's what's happening But I mean that it's what happens when you bow. So, you know, if you don't like it, use a different material. I'm never gonna be able to put another layer of color over this. I just tend to give that up. I think I have the majority of the damage fixed. What <laughs> gonna Quit nitpicking at that. I'm glad it is sort of fixable anyway. Because there have been plenty of situations, and I've done it on camera, plenty of situations where I try to fix something and it shouldn't be a big deal and then it just falls apart on me. I think my relationship with is going to be good enough is good enough get in do what I need to do and get out I 
now on pi prior paper test videos, I have I'd mentioned that you can probably ink on top of tracing paper or vellum or the other papers I've tested. With Yupo, I am not going to extend that guarantee. I'll have to do some testing. I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer it in Photoshop so, you know, the, these two will never be part of the same piece, only in digital world. I'm surprised the green didn't blow, go more into her face than it did. Oh, you can, there's like an area, I guess, where I rested my hand or something, because it is super light. Right here, like it looked like a kind of a bloom. Now, if you really want to make your life miserable, you know how you uh, <laughs> you can re-ink or re-wet, uh, reactivate water-based inks on like acrylic uh, blocks by blowing on them. If you watch the Ranger videos for the distress markers, they talk about it all the time. Um, well, you can do the same thing with this and live to regret it. I'm trying to decide what color to make that last one. And I was just thinking to myself, somehow this paper ended up covered with tiny hairs, even though I wiped it down with rubbing alcohol, and then I remembered it's plastic, so it's gonna have a static charge. So it's gonna attract those things, and those things will get in the way. So, that is definitely something to think about. Be on the lookout for tiny hairs that are gonna affect how you render. So really, um, the brushables work great on uh, translucent Yupo. Like, I really enjoy how they handle. Now, the um, the juicier Zig Art and Graphic Twin, they're going to put down a lot of link, it link, a lot of ink. They're going to take forever to dry. They're going to bleed in the other colors. If you so much as breathe on them wrong, they're going to reactivate. You know, all the good stuff. I'm not even 100% sure how I'm going to scan this. Because I'm a little afraid of um, it being a humid day and my scanner reactivating it. Now I'm finally starting to get a resist. From, even though I've been trying to be careful with my hand. I'm starting to get a resist from where my hand is. So... That's water bait, and you can see the shine of the ink. The ink will always just sit on top of the paper. Um, that has been water based markers on Yupo. Shine is where it's sitting on top. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys found that video helpful. If you did, remember to like this video and maybe leave a comment. If you guys have any suggestions, I would love to hear them because I'm always interested in learning new ways to work with old materials and I'm always interested in new materials. Um, if you enjoy this sort of content, please consider subscribing to my channel because I do this all the time. I love doing art supply reviews. So I hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye.